welcome to my third poetry reading. Thank you for joining in, also for all the feedback last week. Uh, we're going to go live a little bit earlier than planned, mainly to catch the weather, uh, because we're a little bit worried about it. However, anybody that plans with me at 7.30 p.m., uh, the entire readings will be up on my Facebook page anyway. So as I said, uh, welcome. Um, keep those comments coming uh, because it also helps me to shape any future. Um, we are now on day 56 since the schools closed and hoping everybody is continuing to do well and do all the right things and remain safe uh, as we try and battle this out together. Um, we still have some few days to go of course and until the next review date even, I think it's on the 18th of May. Uh, just a, the little plug is just for my own charity, uh, which is the Rice Foundation. And you can donate, of course, online uh, on www.theriseFoundation.ie. That's www.theriseFoundation.ie. It's appropriate this evening because the theme of the five poems that I have picked are indeed uh, to do with recovery and happiness. And um, since we last spoke last Thursday, uh, I lost another great, great friend to COVID in the night. Uh, we were both in recovery together. We soldiered together in this town in Dublin uh, for many, many a year. And indeed, uh, we had, you know, uh, a great recovery journey together ourselves from our own addiction, which was alcoholism. And tonight I want to dedicate the entire reading to the memory of my great friend, Yeshti uh, Gorev Anam Dilish. Welcome back here to my garden in Tarbert on the Shannon Estuary. I'm sitting underneath the beech tree that I spoke about uh, briefly last week, uh, which is just coming to life behind me here, as you can see with the vivid green foliage tree is now over 300 years old. It's a tower of strength at any time, but inspirational on how its beauty shines through no matter what the weather. I find it myself a great source of, of, of inspiration. So sit back and relax and enjoy the five poems this evening. It's a sort of a three and two mix. Uh, three of them are my own poems and two are from other authors and I'll come to them. That'll be the, the first and last and be from the other authors. However, just before I go into that, I want to give you uh, just a little bit of history uh, about the view that you see uh, below me there. Uh, at, the back, at, my, at my back, you should be able to catch a glimpse of a very historic, indeed, landmark here in my village of Tarbert, which is the Tarbert Bridewell Courthouse and Jail Museum. Unfortunately, it closed now due to COVID. But it's, um, uh, it was built and constructed in 1831. I like to think that it, it even came after the tree. Uh, and for more than a century, it was a courthouse and a jail. All legal proceedings were held in the courthouse while prisoners were held cells in the yard before being transported either to the county jail in Tralee or beyond. It's a time not to be forgotten. It's part of our heritage and history, and it's preserved in the great hands of future generations. I also draw your attention to one of the rooms in the, in the Bridewell itself, and it's dedicated probably to the, one of the greatest of Tarbert's uh, writers and artists in Tomas McGreevy. So we have the Tomas McGreevy room at the Bridewell, and it houses an exhibition that documents of the life of, 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 of Tomas McGreevy. He was a poet and literary art critic who was born in Tarbert in 1893. He has a distinguished career and published a range of books and translations. As a critic, he spanned a range of arts, literature, music, opera and ballet. The bit that I love about it is that McGreevy was a close friend of James Joyce, Samuel Beckett, William Butler Yeats, one of my if not all time favourite poets, and Jack B. Yeats, the painter. He was a director of the National Art Gallery of Ireland and he served on the Arts Council. McGreevy's contribution 
uh, to the arts was honored by both the French and Italian governments. So I'm going to go in and read into my first poem based on the theme uh, Recovery and Happiness. Um, first poem uh, is a, a, a real favorite of mine. It's called An Autobiography in Five Short Chapters. And it's by a poet called, an American called Portia Nelson. Um, Portia was born on the 27th of May in 1920, and she died on the 6th of March, 2001. She was a very popular American singer, songwriter, actress, and author. She was known for her appearance in the most prestigious of the 1950s cabarets, where she also sang and had an elegant repertoire in a soprano and noted for its silvery tone, perfect diction, intimacy, and meticulous attention to words. In her acting life, she had a different one, certainly the one I remember her for, and it's an all-time classic, that 1965 uh, film version of The Sound of Music, where she played Sister Berth, uh, that grumpy old nun in that movie, and also had a minor role as Sarah in the musical Dr. Doolittle. Her book of po poetic musings, There is a Hole in My Sidewalk, the romance of self-discovery, became a mainstay of many 12-step centres internationally. I just think it's a lovely poem. Uh, I'm going to read it for you now, and it's called Autobiography in Five Short Chapters by Portia Nelson. Chapter One. I walk down the street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I am lost. I am helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes me forever to find a way out. Chapter Two. I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I am in the same place. But it isn't my fault. Chapter Three. I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it is there. I still fall in. It's a habit. My eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. Chapter four. I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Chapter 5. I walk down a different street. So again, that's a real favourite poem of mine. Um, it's a mainstay of many uh, recovery centres uh, from all sorts of issues uh, uh, right throughout the world. I'm just a bit surprised sometimes we don't hear more about it here, uh, but it's one of those lovely poems. So now having done walk down the other street, it was time really to talk about and discover one's own authentic voice really. So the next poem I'm going to read is one of my own. It's called Finding Finding My Voice and it attempts just to do that and does recognize that we can that we can need help to just go and find the voice. In my case finding my voice came with a little help from a wonderful musical teacher and um, voice uh, coach really in Dublin whose encouragement, teaching skills and patience gave me my own true authentic voice back. Her name is the wonderful Cathy Vard. This one is uh, for you Cathy and uh, it's one I wrote uh, some time ago. Finding my voice Apollo, open your eyes once more, conductor of many a rhythmic lore. Time has not darkened your score. Standards, traditions, customs galore. Stockpiling values like never before. I yearn and plea for so much more. In your cozy front room, 
I discover a musical note that seems to uncover another voice, a lost voice, me, mine. So that's that poem, Finding the Voice. I'm going to move on quickly then and still talk about this journey of recovery into happiness. Um, and I'm going to read two poems pretty much close together and I'll go from one directly into the other. Um, these are really for, as I say, for anybody who either has the good fortune or the misfortune to fall in love with somebody who has substance or other addiction behavioural issues. This is for you if you're in that category. Uh, what I can say to those with loved ones in either active addiction or active recovery, long term or otherwise, you didn't cause it, you can't control it, and you definitely can't cure it. But of course you can do something much better and bigger than that altogether. In fact you begin to look after yourself, and again I go back to the people like the RISE Foundation, professionals, support programs, and particularly want to draw attention to a, a new organisation that came out just over a year ago and was launched by in Dublin by our own Fergal Keane, better known as the better known as the BBC correspondent for um, Africa when he launched Silent Voices in Dublin. Uh, there's no longer a need for anybody to suffer in silence. Uh, just go and get help. So I'm going to read two poems uh, from my first collection, uh, Mind the View. They touch on this subject. Uh, the first one is uh, saying sorry in recovery. So, uh, yeah, it's a, a poem saying sorry in recovery. I wonder how you are, perhaps okay, will I ever know? Twelve dark nights, silences, lonesomeness, emptiness everywhere. Nancy, your portrait and haunting look is everywhere. Today I promise I will phone tonight and for the last time say, I am sorry, I miss you. Come back, but only if you want to. Just one more time you may say, and not for the first time, I don't like falling in love with you. So that's that poem saying sorry in recovery. I'm going to follow that straight by, uh, without introduction, into a poem that I called Love in Recovery. Who you were and still can be when we selfishly choose to be, mulling over the emotional leftovers after the storm running from our past. We must still learn to understand our foolish stubbornness. Held in equal measure by us both, cockeyed now by just growing old. Our never ending dysfunctional story, all night passions beyond us now, making up, making good, making it together, missing out to another day, to another place, to someone else, destiny's children, you said. So there's two of those poems around the whole theme of recovery. The whole idea of getting recovery and happiness uh, into uh, one reading came from something I picked up last week on Poetry Day Island. And this is a wonderful piece of poetry by uh, an Irish poet, Dermot Bulger, who actually read it online. Um, and. Uh, just uh, it, it captured my my imagination and attention and I leave the very final final word of my journey and this journey to the final word in this poem uh, in case you don't know Dermot of course is a really well-known poet writer novelist and playwright he has 13 novels including the family on Paradise Pier journey home uh, Newtown Soul on the leading start. Um, his plays include the lament for Arthur Cleary, which received the Samuel Beckett Award, and 
from the Screen Heights, which won the Irish Times ESP Award at Best New Irish Play in 2004. Uh, his publications include That Which Is Suddenly Precious, New and Selected Poems, Father's Music, uh, Tanglewood, and he is also, of course, a member of Astana. As I said last week, in Poetry Island Day, Dermot read this poem, uh, and as I said, I'd love to finish tonight just reading on the reading this poem by Dermot Bulger. Possibility. Just leave yourself open to the possibility that one dawn you wake to find your mind clear. One dawn you will win back the love you derailed. One dawn you will kick the habit of blaming yourself. One dawn you will wake to hear a clear signal, a wavelength unmuffled by interference or static. You will recognize the DJ's voice as your own, advertising a unique extravaganza treasure hunt, where each clue is a signpost through your past. You will walk through the maze of sleeping estates, collecting golden tickets concealed amid mistakes you made when addiction stopped you thinking straight. That dawn, when figures emerge amidst the chaos, you will walk forward unafraid to embrace happiness. So that's the end of the readings for today. Thank you for listening and I, I hope you really enjoyed them as much as I did reading them here out loud in the, in the back garden. Uh, we're back again next Thursday. I'll be writing, reading, sorry, reading five more poems about music and sport this time. If there is any poem that you would like to be read, uh, please send me a message. Uh, you can get me there on, on, on my message page on Twitter or on my email, paddy at creedonandcreedon.com, and I'd be only delighted to see can we dig it out and read it for you. Uh, so next week is music and sport. Sloan and thank you very much.